Well, it's six fifteen on the dot. Let's get going, Professor. Oh, excuse me, <laughs> Ambassador of Awesomeness. <laughs> That's right. I'm Jill Adelson. I am the Chapel Hill Ambassador of Awesomeness for She Tries. I am here with my friend Camille Baptiste. She is swim, bike, run, fun events director. She's a core sports ambassador. She's just an all around awesome and fun person. Um, ambassador of all things lip gloss. She is here <laughs> to talk with us about climbing in hills, about how we're gonna get over these hills, Huntersville, Chapel Hill has some hills. Um, I don't think Kern's Crossroads has many hills down in South Carolina, but you guys are all going to come up to Chapel Hill the next weekend, so it's worth learning all about hills. Uh, yeah, Thanks. welcome, Camille. Thanks for coming. Thank you for inviting me over. Thank you, She Tries Crew. And today we're going to be having just a quick conversation about how to, about hills and how to get over them. Um, sometimes it's all, oh, sorry, I got extra noise. Sorry about that. It's all about effort. And what happens is, we get going, we get going, and then we get to this hill, either we see it or we feel it, and we immediately get discouraged because we slow down. And sometimes figuring out the different ways to get over those hills is what we're going to talk about today so that you could be successful in your triathlon. All right, Jill, I see Winston Salem in the house. Hello, 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 hello. So if you have questions while we're here, drop them in the chat. Uh, we'll try to adjust it or, or the Facebook group, wherever you could see it, or raise your hand and we'll try to um, save some time for discussion. And there's no question, there is no scenario that is stupid or not worth asking. We have a lot of newer triathletes um, that are participating in these events. So even something simple as what do you eat and how do you eat and how do you drink on your bike or even use the bathroom? All of those little questions are very important questions. And until you ask or until you experience your first try, you really don't know the answer to. So that's what we're going to try to talk about till tonight. So hills, how do you get over them? And so first thing is mental. You need to mentally get over it. Whether you see it or you feel it, it is, it is physics that you are going to slow down. No one climbs hills almost at the same rate as they ride flat, even the pros. You can't do it. You have to put so much effort into doing it. And so we're going to figure out how is the best way to get over those hills with the least amount of effort or the best gearing possible. So one of the mental tricks you always have to tell yourself, hey, I'm a, soon, this is going to be over soon. Whether it's a long incline or a long hill, you here for this. And that once you get over it, once you mentally figure out, okay, I'm going to slow down and I'm okay as part of the process, then you'll embrace it a little bit better. Sometimes you might need a, a, a mantra. Uh, I think when we were in Kona, we had one lady telling us, what did she tell us? What did she say? Slap her into her something. What, she said, what was it, Jill? I don't remember. Yeah, it was like, like slap us and tell her, I don't want to cuss, but it was something like, go girl, but with a beat, right? <laughs> and, and that motivated her. So whatever you have to tell yourself, whether that be, I say cuss. Cussing gives you extra power, extra what's going up. Prayer, if you have to pray, sing the worst song, whatever. Sometimes I used to sing this little light of mine or this little engine that could. Whatever, row, row, row your boat. Whatever it is you want to try to do, a, make a mantra to help you focus or even some a simple mental trick like counting. And it'll, I was gonna say, it'll keep you focused. You, you, of course, you know me. Miss Miss Math over here. Um, counting to ten. Can I make it there by ten? Now I'm gonna count down from ten. Now I'll count back up. Okay, maybe by the time I count down again, I'll be at the top of this hill. So, and uh, your bike says, we'll, yeah, your bike says shut up, legs. And you tell the bike shut up behind it. Shut up and work. Yeah. Britney song got a Britney Spears got a song for that. <laughs> and Pony so, yeah. says just relax and breathe. You are exactly correct. And um counting and and sometimes i used to get discouraged i'm like okay how many pedals can i make it to the top i think i can make it in 50 and then it'd be like four it'd be like 66 and i ain't there yet i'm like shit okay i need to make it longer so i would count to 100 so i come i get to the top I'm like yes i won i beat 100 and then if i feel like i'm getting to 100 too close i'll slow the countdown so that i can have a winning 
mindset, right? So that's the yes. first part of getting over hills is embrace the suck, realize you're going to slow down, you're supposed to slow down, and this is not going to last forever. You may feel like forever. Your legs may tell you shut up. Your bike might start cranking and squeaking. And if your bike is cranking and squeaking, that moves on to the next stop. Use your gears on your bike to help you go up. You have a left side and right side. Most bikes, whether you're on a road bike or a mountain bike, you have a left side that has a some kind of lever in the handlebar or a button to help you move the front big cocks. And on the right side, whether you have a lever or a button, mountain bike or road bike, it helps you control the gearing or the hub or the the. the the cranks in the back or the knobs, whatever it is you want to call you, it controls the back wheel. And you want to find the best and easiest gear to keep your legs moving. You're going to be fighting in physics. You're going to be fighting in inertia. You're going to slow down and you want to make sure that you kind of keep pedaling. So that may mean what's the best cassette to use to help climb. So that may mean that you get into a small ring the smallest ring in the front, and most, most 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 bikes have either two in the front or three. You want to get into the smallest ring in the front, and on the back cassette, the largest. Because when you rotate like this, you want to have a quick re revolution. So you want to go from big to small, big to small. So you want to use your gears. And sometimes you want to make sure that you keep spinning. You keep spinning because if you keep mashing, you keep mashing, you're going to hit too many dead spots and you could conk out on the hill or just say, forget this, I'm going to walk. And it's okay to walk, whether it's your first race, your 10th race, your 100th race, it is okay to walk up a hill. It doesn't invalidate you from the race. It doesn't mean you're not disqualified. It doesn't mean that you are less than. It may mean that you you and your bike need to talk to each other and work a little bit better together to go up the hill. <laughs> but there are some hills, even for the pros, you got to walk up. So just please keep that in mind. Um, race for those with the hybrid, one set of gears. Meaning you have only one cog in the front and one in the back. Tiffany, that question was for you. Well, we wait for Tiffany to answer that. I'll say another kind of thing is that you're hitting the hills. If someone's only pedal, pedal, pedal as you're coming to the hill, don't start slowing down, you know, get some speed going into that hill and then start shifting down as it gets harder. Don't just shift. Just gears on the right handle. So, rear so the line. gears on the right handle affect the gears in the back. And as long as you get into the largest cog you have in the back, which is usually the one closest to the wheel, right? Not the one furthest away from the wheel, the one closest to the wheel, then that is your easiest gear to keep your legs going. When you mash and power through, if you see that, you hit dead spots, you hit dead spots. But if you keep moving like this, even if it means like you feel like you're not going anywhere, you just keep spinning, you keep spinning, eventually you're gonna get to the top, but you won't get to the top burnt out. Very important. This is a nine mile. This is a nine mile course, yep. almost ten mile course, and you have to maximize your energy and your mental fortitude for all ten of those miles. So when you come out of of transition, you know the first thing you're gonna do if this is your first triathlon is you can't. You have to walk your bike through transition. When you get to the open area past the place that's enclosed. That's called the transition. There's going to be some lines. Some people call it a get on your bike line. Some people call it a desk, a, a, a mount line. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's going to be some volunteer telling you. What, once you get on that bike, make sure that when you put your bike up, it is at a comfortable gear, not in your hardest gear. Because you just came out the swim. You just tried to run. You probably didn't know where your bike was. You kind of crazy, and you be like, "Oh my God, it's a race! It's a race! I gotta go! I gotta go! And I gotta get on! I gotta put my helmet! I gotta do all of these things." So you want to make sure you rack your bike in an easy gear to start the start the race in. And, and when a you reminder, easy gear means the bigger ones in back. You want to Correct be towards those bigger right. ones. Right, and in the front, the smallest one 
closest to the wheel. So you want to go everything closest to your left hand. That's on the right. You want to get it closest to your left hand or closest to the inside of the bike. When you come out now, that'll give you, you're not grinding as soon as you kind of come out. That'll give you some time to get your, your rhythm up and kind of get going. And then there's a slight little uphill, right? Now, when you have that slight little uphill, not all hills are the same. Some hills are like this and some are like a gradual climb. You start riding, riding, riding and you're like, oh my God, this road feels a little different. I was going 10 miles an hour. Now I'm only going nine because the road is going slightly gradually up. That falls under the hill hills incline column then you have some hills that you come around you be like oops and then you go down when you look ahead when you're riding your bike you want to plan and anticipate those gear changes and then when you come down you want to make sure you have the point when you come down you're not gasping for air at the top you use that momentum to keep you down and if it's a rolling hill it will take you right back up the next hill and make the next hill easier make the next incline easier so I can't tell you what best gear to use. I think I saw a question to come across, which yep. is the best cassette. Um, the best cassette is the one you got on your bike. You got to use what you got. That's the best. At this, at this stage in game, whatever bike you have, it is, it'll carry you from that whole 10 miles to start. It may not be as fast as you like. It may require more effort, but any bike works. And um, Shelby asked about what number in back when they rack it what number in back so if you want to mark a mountain bike it might be um seven um if you're asking for a number most people who have a number is usually because they have a hybrid or a mountain bike and you see the numbers in the gear so you may have one through five you will have to look and see the numbers as they progress so if you go click 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 if you turn your wheel up and you keep changing it and you see the number, you'll see how far it's moving to the right, how far it's moving to the left. So you want to make sure that once you practice that or see that, and you can do that without getting on your bike, then you'll know what number. Did I answer your question, Shelby? So we talk about pacing. Um, there are some hills or inclines that just seem like they are forever, and that can mentally beat the hell out of you take your time and go up you don't want to be so taxed that you don't try to hammer through the bike course that you that you can't run we're triathletes now we, we're talking triathlete talk we're not quite talking cyclist talk we're talking triathlete talk you have a whole run and walk a plan for this afterwards so when we say pace yourself and maximize your energy and use your gears is so that you have enough juice in your leg you keep mashing, mashing, mashing. By the time you get off that bike course, you, you may have had a great bike split. But you're like, oh, sh oh, shoot, I'm tired. I'm walking now. So you have to remember you have this three economies of scale. You got the swim, the bike, and the run. We're going to try to set you up successfully for those hills so that you could be successful on the run. Um, and if when, you're not mashing up that hill, that means you can also keep pedaling when you go down that hill and use that gravity and use that momentum instead of just coasting. You know, if you're mashing all the way up, then you're dead at the top and you can't take advantage of that gravity. So being in those easier gears as you go up is going to help you have energy to keep going after the top. Exactly. And while we're here, we talked about, we're talking about pacing. The next thing I want to talk about is body form. But when you go down, some people don't like going down. So especially for the steep, you get rewarded with the downhill. If you are Sitting upright and you go downhill, you're going to feel a wind. It's actually, you're forming resistance. You may see some people kind of what they call tuck or get in their um, road bike bars so that they could go down faster to ride the momentum. And there may be some people slightly tapping on their brakes because they don't like the speed. Just remember, you have to do what's comfortable for you and your tolerance. However, when you come across that hill, it's going to be a downhill. If you know if you don't like downhills too much, try to make sure you stay on the inside. It's very important. Because if I'm coming down that hill, whether it be my first, my 100 triathlon, I'm a bigger girl. I'm a, I'm a fly down the hill. I've actually ridden on hills with no brakes. <laughs> it just can tell you. It, 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 <laughs> literally no brakes. <laughs> 
No, so, do, please make sure you have breaks before race day. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes, get your breaks checked, but there are going to be people that are going to actually fly. So if you, if the descents are something you're more cautious on, just prepare yourself when you get oh, get on top of the hill to, to make sure you kind of stay to the right so that someone doesn't go. And you might have people zip by you. They can't stop it. It's, it's physics. It's inertia, right? So you want to gradually increase your effort. Take advantage of the downhill, like she said, because now you have momentum as you be able to change gears. Now, if you're not used to changing your, gear, your gears automatically or very um, responsibly, there'll come a point when you realize now your legs are just spinning. And that's your bike way of telling you it's time to change your gears, right? Either you're working too hard or you're not working hard enough, you realize once your legs start doing this or start doing this, your bike is telling you it's time to change gears because it shouldn't be that hard. It should work with you and for you, not against you. And a lot of people, when they are um, climbing those hills, if you look at some pictures, they're hunched over, they're grinding, the thing that they've closed up. You want to make sure you kind of relax the shoulders and open up so air can kind of come through. Physics. Air is like gas for your legs. The oxygen is gasoline for your legs. When your leg is telling you shut up, no, it's really telling you open your mouth and breathe and breathe deep. <laughs> So you want to fuel the fire, and if it doesn't have oxygen, if you don't have proper airflow, that could also make you either very tired, it'll also make you feel haggard, it also make you feel like you're thirsty because you're foaming at the mouth, and then you start drinking too much, and then it just goes downhill from there. So as you, even though this is maybe hard, you want to make sure you try to stay a little bit relaxed and just think of it not about, oh my God, I'm not tense, I'm not upset, but just physically allow yourself to breathe deeply. Because when you're <laughs> breathing like that, you do not get anywhere fast in your, your, the people that need your muscles, your legs, your glutes, your calves, is way down here, it's not up here. So you want to make sure that you suck all the air as deep as you can, um, and that will help with your body form and breathing easy. When you take deep breaths now, sometimes, I'm not saying I, I still don't suffer up the hills, but if you, and you get deep, when you get to the top, you no longer have that relief. Now your body is prepared to kind of go down. So breathing is very important to help you. And then now once you're relaxed and you breathe in and you've overcome that hill and you right now. Now you're about at mile four because I see the first rolling hills. You're right about mile four. You have to start as a steady climb, a steady climb, a steady climb, and you're building momentum. And all of a sudden you go, oh, shoot, I'm reading your elevation map. So I'm reacting to your this elevation is, map. Yep, this is the Chapel Hill event she's looking at. Exactly. And then you go, wait a minute, what's going on here? And you have what they call rolling hills, these little dips, these little inclines. They're not big hills, but you just realize, oh, shoot, oh, shoot, oh. And then you go. You want to use those momentum. You want to use those time, right? And you want to just really literally hug and ride the hills and ride the curves. And then when you get to about mile seven, mile four, you're like, oh my God, I'm so tired of this. When the hell is this race going to happen? And you have one last big effort. Knowing the bike course and driving the bike course ahead of time. I'm going to say that again. If you can read maps, beautiful. If not, we encourage you to drive not ride drive the bike course as soon as you can or before your race not that morning of because then that's just too much perhaps the day before if you're local ride it if you if it's safe to ride if not drive it because then you could actually now once you are familiar with some things it makes you feel like you're in control when you don't know something and then something just comes upon you now you got to think what to do what not to do you when you get to to this corner and you've been there before and you've driven and you'd be like, okay, I know this. Okay, the hill is coming around. You can start building momentum mentally and physically. Once you get over that last big hill, which is like at the back quarter of the race, you're going to enjoy a few mm -hmm. little you're gonna go fly right down. You're gonna fly right down into transition. You're gonna ride reach to transition either feeling haggard or feeling fresh like yes but remember there's that line there's that 
dismount line is there's that yes. get off your bike line that you have to be able to prepare to stop <coughs> and get off beforehand. And so once you embrace hill climbing and you embrace that you physically will have to deal with these things and that it's going to slow you down, it's designed to slow you down, then once you embrace that, you're going to have a beautiful race because you know it's not you. You don't suck, the road sucks. I'm going to say that again. You don't suck, the road sucks. All them damn roads should be flat, but nope. <laughs> they picked the most inconvenient spot to go up <laughs> and go left or right. So I think that's kind of the... I think that's my little 15 minutes right there. We had Pony had a question about what about standing up in the saddle? Does it help? If your legs can do that, it can help. Some people use um, their hamstrings and their quads, and it can help to bring you forward. There are some heavier riders like myself or like Jennifer, we know how to use our glutes and we know how to shift on the bike. There are some climbs standing up is a lot easier because it puts you at the same angle that you're going. We're talking physics now, right? As opposed to sitting here and trying to go this and fighting against it. But some climbs are so steep, you just need to stand up two or three times and then they're over there and it makes you mad. The only way that I, I could tell you that exactly works really depends on you, the rider, and the hill. That's something you, you got to work out with you and the hill. Yeah, it's not a strategy for every hill. You don't want to be standing up every hill the whole time going up that hill, or you're not going to have any legs left when you get to the end of that. Like, you got like, some big mammoth. I got, I got, I'm going to speak for myself. I got some big mammoth yeah. muscles in my glutes. They got names, okay? Laverne and Shirley. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to use them. Uh, if not, if you don't use it, you lose it. So I got to use them. And sometimes I could, I could climb for a really long time, begrudgingly, cussing and all, tired <laughs> as hell. But then I could tap into some reserves in my back saddle. What else we got? Let me see. Let me see. I think I went over. For the first time, try athletes. If for some reason you hit a mechanical, either you can't change your gears, or your gears are stuck, or none of these things or suggestions that we give to you here today work, screw it. Get off the bike. Forward is the motion. Walk it up. Your job is to get from point A to point B by any means necessary going forward, the same direction as the race course. So if you decide to walk, your, if you decide to carry your bike, <laughs> that counts. That counts. What else we got? Did I go over the elevation? I went over the elevation. I saw Huntersville. I saw Chapel Hill. Oh, yes. So um, in the Chapel Hill um, bike course, if you are doing the Chapel Hill bike course, as soon as you come out and you hit um, Weaver Mine Trail, soon as you come out and you hit, like you're heading towards Gunsey Trail. How many trail roads you got down there? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Listen, within the first mile, your race is going to be exciting. For those that are doing Chapel Hill, the first mile is going to be exciting. Whatever your coach, Ambassador Austin said to do, do. But I'm also going to share with you, park your bike in a comfortable gear so that when you come out, you have, you're not struggling to pedal. You could adjust adjust some things you get momentum and adjust some things as you go up because when you come out you're going to have an incline you're going to have a hill you're going to have a change of pace a change of direction it might go up on you but not for long and then you have a few of those and then you have a beautiful half mile downhill and a few out of there so you want to prepare yourself when you come out of transition you're not just going to be coasting. You're going to have to put in a little bit of work, and then you get rewarded in the middle of it. Then you have, like, some easy sailing kind of going into it. And then the last quarter, remember, whatever you go up, you got to come down. So the last quarter, like, right about seven miles, you're going to have a beautiful downhill 
to ride the uphill back into transition. And that's very important. What about tire issues? I'm going to leave that over to your uh, ambassador of Austin to answer. Yeah. So we do have giant bikes is going to be there with us. And so if, if you have the equipment and you can change your tire, if you have a flat or something, by all means, please do it. Um, in fact, if you are local, we have an in-person clinic with Inside Out Sports in Cary that we're going to have. And they're going to, you bring your, either your bike or if you can take your tire off and just want to bring your wheel, bring your wheel, uh, take your wheel off. Uh, they're going to go over how to change a flat tire and help you work through that. So if you can do it, by all means, do it, get back on your bike and go. But if not, we have bike folks there. They're going to be set up before the race. So if you need help checking your tire pressure, checking any little things out, they will be there to help you out. And then they're on course. Uh, but it's always good to at least have the tube with you so that you can have the equipment you need. I got something to say about tires. Yeah. My very first bike lesson 15 years ago, my very first, meaning like I picked up my brand new road bike on a Thursday and I was already back in the shop that Sunday. I was so excited. I rode the bike for three days and then I crashed it. I show up at the bike shop and the guy goes, Camille, I see your problem. I'm like, what? You wasn't there. What's my problem? I was like, oh, defensive he said always air up your tires that's free speed and so my tire pressure was low and because it when it's low and it's not aired up tight when you roll it, it kept getting squishy and squishy and it pinched into a groove and it caused me to kind of go down and i didn't air up my tire and i was like but it felt good he was like no so ever since that very expensive lesson I no longer do the, oh, it's aired up. I actually put air in my tires. So your tire pressure will improve your speed and your hill climbing. Your tire pressure will improve your speed and your hill climbing. On your bike, on the tire, it says 55 PSI, 100 PSI, 80 PSI, 70 PSI. That's the max in inflation. Um, I'm going to give you a little pro tip. If it's if you know if your tire pressure says 70 max inflation and it's a little bit drizzly that day or the roads are a little bit slick just let a little out you want to go at 60 you want to go at 65 but if it's a clear beautiful sunny day blow that sucker up to 70 and your speed will increase your hill climb will be better and you no longer will be fighting the road the, it will be working for you excellent tip thank you you're welcome what else we got What questions do you have about hill climb? Uh, I'll tell you, I was working transition at our Winston-Salem uh, clinic, and we had some women who uh, realized after the bike that they got thirsty out there for my, nine miles. So I highly encourage you to have a bottle of water or a bottle with your favorite electrolytes, whether it be Scratch or Noon or uh, Tailwind or whatever, but practice that. You have to practice to be able to get it off your bike and drink it while you're riding. So don't put it on your bike for the first time race day. Uh, but it is good. We had some women coming in for the run who were just like, oh, I'm so thirsty. Why didn't I have water? So make sure if you want water on the bike that you carry it with you because the only water stop is on the run. Can I say something? Mm -hmm. I just thought of something. So a lot of hills or very long steady incline can mentally and physically zap you out and you're like i need water you get to the top you're like screw this i need water but you're not comfortable drinking water while you ride you don't necessarily want to stop at the top of the hill that's a little bit of a safe issue make sure you kind of pull over but then now you got that downhill to kind of take advantage of, right? So figuring out when to drink water, most time you figure, oh my God, I just finished that heavy effort. I can't go anymore on the top of the hill. If that is most comfortable for you, safely kind of move over to the side. And then 
in transition, when you come out and you kind of settle down, when you come back out of the swim into transition, try to drink beforehand or in anticipation of, remember, you drove the course the day before. If you drove the course the day before, the, um, you'll know, okay, this is coming up, that is coming up, and you could get the water before you hit those large efforts. And packet pickup is at the same location as the race. So if you're coming to a packet pickup on Saturday, you're coming out there anyway, come early or afterwards, go and drive that course. There's lots of time there. Uh, we have some special clinics going on that day of packet pickup. So just once you're done with your clinics and you're in your packet, head out there and drive the course. I agree with that. And let me think, I was one last thing. Um, how long is the run after this? Two miles. Two miles. Uh, I bet a lot of you want to have a nice, successful run or run at a pace that you're comfortable to run. If you mash up those hills, if you expend all of those, all of your energy by not using your gears, not I, not um, airing up your tires, not maximizing on on uh, using the you know the downhill to your advantage, you might be. A a little tapped out on the run don't freak out it happens to all of us the first time almost all of us thought oh we got this in the bag and they're like mile mile and a half we walking until we see the camera guy or the finish line then we start back running so that's real talk just real talk um if you've never put all of those three things together in a training session before and if you've never done a brick before which is a bike and a run practicing your run may not be as fast as you're accustomed it to happen, and that's okay. Don't let that mentally defeat you. And now if you usually run nine minute miles, that means you might be running 10, 11. If you usually run 12 minute miles, that might be 14. So make sure that you set yourself up by success by having the best possible bike ride possible to, so you can bring it back home. And I think that's all I, I think I need to conclude on. And I think we've answered all the questions, Jaja just, chiming in to have a if you don't feel comfortable drinking on your bike have a drink in a bottle in transition so you make sure you get it but for the bike and then before your run so hi Jaja. great tip is that the Jaja? it's the Jaja. hey Jaja. <laughs> <laughs> we got all kind of people pop in it i thank you so much for coming and talking with us camille it's always so much fun having you around talking about Bikes. Anyone who came for the tech check beforehand got to hear all the lip gloss tips and then during all the great tips about biking up the hills, about nutrition and hydration. So thank you so much for coming and spending time with us. You have a good night. Good luck all you first time triathletes. Have the best race possible. It's an adventure. Say yes to it. And may the force be with you on that day. <laughs> and anyone who's watching the video, because I know we had quite a few people ask if the video would be posted. If we didn't answer any of your questions, you can post in there, especially if you tag me, Jill Adelson. I'll make sure Camille or I see it and we get answers to you because we're here to help you have an awesome race day. Okay. Thanks. Bye, guys. I don't Bye. know how you hit the off button. Do you hit I the off it. button on me? I got a finish button. Thank <laughs> you.